There is a lot of confusion on the internet about how much you actually need to be able to leave off your investments in retirement. But one thing is sure, you need to know this no matter how old you are. The latest report projects that the Social Security Fund is running out of money and will deplete it in 2033 and after that we'll only be able to pay out about 77% of scheduled benefits. So in this video I'll show you how you can calculate exactly how much you need to have before retiring based on your real needs and expectations and based on over 100 years years of historical data. I'm going to show you exactly what is the probability that you're going to be able to leave off any amount you set and I will also give you free access to a compound interest calculator that I created and improved lately with some new functions. By the way, this video is not only for older generations, so don't skip this video if you're younger because actually that's the best time to start with investing and thinking about retirement. And if you're wondering why this uh, I cut myself pretty bad today and I don't want this to become a horror movie, so the show must go on. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Rick, welcome, say hi with a beautiful like or a comment and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for future videos. So now, let's get into it. Obviously, personal finance is personal and it all boils down to your individual needs, your spending, your lifestyle, so your first step is going to be to calculate what your yearly expenses, because that's what you want to withdraw every year, adjust it for inflation without ever running out of money. On this first step, don't care about the effect of future inflation now because we're going to consider it later on. Just sum up everything you spend money on during the year, starting from your fixed expenses like rent, food, transportation, your extra expenses like dining out, holidays, clothes, I mean everything you spend money on. To make this calculation, for my example I'm going to pretend that you are a single person with no kids, no wife, but again, if that's not your case, it's okay. Just get to the value that you believe is your average annual expense and use that from now on on the video. At nerdwallet.com you can see here that the average monthly expense for one person is right around 3700 bucks a month or just over $44,000 annually. The median household income according to census.gov in 2022 for all households was roughly $74,580. Obviously this changes depending on how many people you have in the household and how many are income earners. You can see this from justice.gov a one earner varies by state but goes anywhere from roughly 47,000 a year all the way up to 70, 80,000 in some states. If you have two people, three people or more, this obviously goes up. The next step is calculating the wealth you can reach depending on how much you think you're going to be able to invest every month and this is going to be a reality check for everyone because you make a first assumption here then we test the result and we see if instead you're going to need to invest more or less. To do this, we're going to use a table of mine that you can download completely for free from the link in the description below. Of course, if you can, be nice and drop a like to this video if you download the file, that's much appreciated. So I created here two different ways to calculate the development of your wealth based on your monthly investment. So let me show you here how it works so that you can use this table for whatever values are right for you. First of all, here you can roughly calculate how big your portfolio should be based on a famous 4% rule and your average annual expense. So let's say you spend 40,000 per year, you're gonna need that $1 million portfolio to live off it based on the 4% rule. But the real fun comes now because we can see how our wealth is gonna grow based on the amount we're able to invest every month. So we have two ways here to choose from and the cells you need to insert values in are always the yellow ones, while the green is the result. So using the first method, we can enter first of all the initial capital that we have because maybe now you have a lump sum that you could invest, but let's put now zero just for the sake of this example. For the rate of return, historically the American stock market has returned around 10%, but let's be conservative here and write 8%. In the monthly investment, you're going to write how much you think you're going to be able to invest every month, so let's say for example $500. And lastly, your financial goal, the wealth that you want to reach. If you base it on the calculation above, with the 40,000 annual expense, and the 4% rule, we would write here a million dollar. But in case you have any other value in mind, just write whatever you prefer. So the green cell here tells you exactly how many years you're gonna need by investing 500 bucks per month to reach the financial goal you've set, if the market grows with an average of 8% per year. Down here instead, you see the breakdown of the portfolio growth year after year. And both from this table and from the graph here on the right, you can see how the wealth grows faster than your contributions the longer you stay invested. In addition to this calculation, I set up a reverse calculator. So basically, if you instead use this table here, it's because you wanna calculate what monthly investment is gonna be needed 
based on your financial goal and the number of years that you have at your disposal. So this table is suited for people that want to become financially independent in a specific time frame and want to know how much they need to invest in order to get to that value in that time frame. So for example, if you're 35 and you want to retire by 65, you know you have 30 years available. So you'd write here 30. Then you set again initial capital, let's say zero, rate of return, let's say again 8%, in your financial goal. Let's say again, a million dollars. This table tells you that if you wanna reach a million dollars in 30 years, with a growth of 8%, you're gonna need $671 investment every month. In fact, if we write 671 here on the left instead of the 500, you're gonna see that the numbers of years needed goes down from 34 to 30. Here you go. So summarizing, you download the table for free, calculate how much you spend per year, calculate your final portfolio based on your monthly investment and your financial goal, and basically you have now a first idea of how much you're gonna need and how to get there. Before getting to the most important part of this video, I wanna remind you that, of course, everybody would like to be rich and accumulate wealth, but you need to remember something that I call the law of the three assets, which are time, money, and health. I call it like this because I've noticed that in order to increase or maintain one of these three assets in life, you need to consume at least another one of the three. So what happens is that when you're young, you focus on making money and start depleting time and health for it. But there is a point in life in which you should stop accumulating money and instead give more value to your time and to your health. But often people stop caring about money when they're older and they find out they don't have enough of time and health left. So always remember this and give value to your time and health. Now it's time to check if the amount that we calculated is really gonna be enough for your retirement. And in this part of the video, I'm also gonna show you with solid historical data, how you can actually be sure of what you need without risking getting out of money in retirement. To check this, we're gonna use a website called FICALC.app. I'm gonna link this website in the description below so you'll find it there. FICALC is a database of historical results of a little over 150 years of the American stock market since 1871. And what it does is it makes over 100 simulations of your retirement with a specific portfolio during all these years to calculate the probability that this portfolio is gonna be enough for you. So let me give you a practical example to make it clearer for you. First of all, we need to assume how long you're gonna stay in retirement because we want the money to last over the whole period at least. So let's say that you retire at 55 and you assume you're gonna live until 85. That's 30 years. So let's write 30 here. Now, how big is your portfolio when you retire? This is gonna be the value that we calculated before on the other table. So let's assume here a million dollars, otherwise write what you calculated yourself before. Now you need to set how much of your portfolio is gonna be stocks, how much is gonna be bonds, and how much is gonna be cash. Usually I suggest to keep a percentage of bonds that is equal to your age minus 10. So considering that you're going to retire at 55 in this example, 55 minus 10 makes 45% bonds. Let's keep the cash at 0%. And so if bonds are 45%, stocks are gonna be the remaining 55. By the way, there is no ultimate rule when it comes to bonds. Some say you have to use your age as percentage, so in this case, it will be 55%, but I prefer to detract at least 10 because the rule of the age is an old rule, and now the life expectancy has grown and we work longer. Now, going down here, we write how much we're gonna withdraw per year, and this is gonna be the average annual expense that you expect on the year zero, namely on the first year of retirement. In the example before, we used $40,000, so we're gonna put 40,000 here. And just for inflation here, means that only the first year, you're gonna withdraw actually $40,000. While all the following years, since inflation is gonna increase the cost of living, even your $40,000 are gonna to have to be increased to keep up with the inflation. This is the reason why before I told you to just focus on how much you spend now without thinking about inflation, because this website does it for you. When it comes to withdrawal strategy, we're gonna use the constant dollar strategy. That means that you're always gonna withdraw the 40% adjusted for inflation. This is the best and more conservative strategy because if you use these, it means you never have to adjust your lifestyle based on the market conditions. No matter what happens, if there's a crash or a bear market, you can always withdraw this amount. So let's see the results. The app made 123 simulations and 119 out of 123 were successful, meaning in 96.7% of the cases, by withdrawing $40,000 per year adjusted for inflation for 30 years, you'd have never run out of money with a million dollar portfolio. $40,000 is 4% of a million dollar. 
In fact, to get this value, we use the so-called 4% rule before, which states that 4% per year is the safe withdrawal rate of a portfolio in order to ensure you don't run out of money. As you can see here, this is true 96.7% of the time. So you might even want to increase the success probability. So you can play here with the portfolio and increase it to see what happens to the percentage. If we wait a little bit more and instead of retiring with a million dollar, we retire, for example, with a million and fifty thousand dollars, which is really not much more, the probability goes up to 99.2%, which is a pretty decent success rate. Obviously, you need to consider also that if you are ready to reduce your spending in some years, in case, for example, of a crash or a bad market conditions, you're going to be able to survive longer or you need even a lower portfolio. So, for example, if we change the withdrawal strategy from constant dollar to the 95% rule, we get a 100% success rate. For reference, the 95% rule is another pretty conservative rule where you withdraw either a percentage of the current value of the portfolio, typically around 4%, or 95% of your previous year's withdrawal, whichever is larger. So what this means, as they write in the explanation, is that your withdrawal will only ever drop at most 5% from the previous year even if that market experiences a sudden sharp drop. And now let's see what happens if you instead calculated the wrong final portfolio value. So let's get back to the table. Let's say that your average annual expense is still $40,000. So the 4% rule still suggests you a portfolio of a million dollars. But let's say now that you don't want to invest so much or you don't have enough money or time to invest. So you invest $450 instead of $500. And instead of investing for 35 years, as the table here says you should do to reach a million dollars, you invest only for 30 years and then you retire. If you look at the breakdown here, after 30 years, you're just gonna have $670,661. And as I showed you before, you reach a million dollar only after 45 years. So getting back to FICAL.app, we get back to the cost and dollar strategy and we insert here 670,661 instead of 1 million. As you can see, by withdrawing 40,000 per year, you only have a success rate of 51.2%, which is a coin toss. In only 63 out of 123 retirement simulations, you were able to sustain withdrawals of $40,000 for 30 years without running out of money. And if you scroll down, you see all the simulations and wherever you see an X, you basically ran out of money before the end of the 40 years. So you can see here that if you retired with that amount in whatever year between 1974 and 1955, so almost two decades, you would have run out of money too soon. Let's take, for example, 1965 to 1994, and you can see that your portfolio would have rapidly gone down, leaving you without money after only 17 of the 30 years you were hoping to be retiring. All right, summarizing, you can use my free table to play with your monthly contributions and see which portfolio you can reach and you can use FICALC.app to check if the portfolio is gonna be enough. But to be sure, without having to test back and forth, just use the 4% rule. So calculate the annual expense, for example, $40,000 per year, and multiply it by 25, giving you in this example, a million dollars. This is the amount that, if you reach it, will allow you to withdraw $40,000 per year, adjusted for inflation, with an extremely high probability to never run out of money. I hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. If you did, subscribe to the channel and let me know I'm not just talking to myself by dropping a beautiful like to this video. I wish you a wonderful day, guys, or evening, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.